We have returned to the IRS Radio Hour <gasps> wow. on AM560, The, the answer. answer. I am joined by my co-host, Jim Leahy. Hey, isn't that right, Jim? That's right. We are here. We are here, and we are here to help you we are. with your IRS-related issues. Yes. And this is the segment that will help you the most. Let's get that intro going, Debbie. It's the blog segment. The blog. The blog. <laughs> I don't know, but I Debbie, really, I, I meant to say thank you at the end of it. Please and thank you. I do have a... I'm sorry. I Debbie just, Debbie Schreiner, the best in the business, ladies and gentlemen. Best I, in the business. I love that music. I don't, I, I chose it myself. <laughs> I do like it, though. <laughs> Reminds me of Channel 9 late at night. When I was a kid, he was always on late at night. Uh, I didn't really watch the show that much, though. I, <laughs> but I always liked the music. Okay. So this, this did you week, also like Bette Midler? No, oh wait, <laughs> you, you just stop, throw, stop, don't stop. throw me off. Like oh that. no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's I want, a conversation. I wanted, to, I wanted to mention that, that next week we're going to have the Cooking Cop, Peter Bella. Uh, he's a he's a guy I've known for some time now, and uh, he's a retired Chicago police op- officer. And he has a blog, The Cooking Cop, and he writes. He also writes on uh, other blog posts about politics and things like that. I heard him on um, uh, John Cass's blog, podcast. He has a I don't know if you have a, I don't want to plug him. Yeah. He doesn't plug me. I'm not going to plug him. Who's that? To John Cass's? You don't know who John Cass is? I know Cass who John Cass is. Okay, I figured you did. I know he's a soccer fan. But he was on. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, I don't know. Soccer. I can talk about that. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I wanted to pl- I wanted to uh, plug that to next week. So you can come in next week. You'll meet Peter Bella, the cooking cop. And, uh, it's going to be a great show. Do you think show. he'll bring some food with? <laughs> That's, I should. I should uh, I'm just saying. I understand. Bring that I never him. thought about that. But, you know, if we're going to talk about uh, cooking cop, it brings, bring something. And it's Friday. So, you know, bring some fish or something. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of uh, cop friends, and uh, and so, so he, him too. He's a good guy, and you'll meet him next week. So join us next week. Now, don't go anywhere now, because right now I'm going to talk about the IRS. That's oh, right. and Ooh. the collection efforts. How to stop the IRS collection efforts? Because what happens is, what people, uh, you know, the IRS starts coming after you. Remember now, they could take, they levy your bank account, they garnish your wages. They they could take away your assets. They can uh, visit your house, visit your home. You know, make your life uh, pretty much bad. Okay, and, and you know what? A lot of people from what we were talking about in previous shows, which you can access at ChicagoTaxTeam dot com, the hub, your IRS hub, right. to help you gain information. But remember, we talked about in other shows where. A lot of people want to do this on their own, like me, for example. Well, you know what? I didn't do anything when wrong. When people do that's exactly what. But, but when people do this on their own, what happens is they really just shut down and they don't do anything. And what happens that the IRS? I do that the it best. Takes, <laughs> it's true. The it, it takes the IRS a long time to get on you. You know, they, the to focus on you. So people mistakenly think, oh. They don't know that I haven't filed and I haven't paid, and they're not going to do anything about it because it goes a year or two years, uh, and and the IRS hasn't come. So they just think, oh, I guess I'm under the radar. It just takes a long time for the IRS to come after you. And but one, now, once they come after you, then they're relentless and they'll never let you go. But, you know, I always talk about you know, how to stop the collection efforts is to get involved. Now, there's only six things you can do if you owe the IRS money. And that's it. I talk a lot about this Isn't on the show. Isn't there a way we can access that information? Yeah, well, it's all on. The, that's right. But I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to mention the six things. Okay. Just, just uh, briefly. The first thing is I could pay them. The second thing is I could do an installment agreement. And that's paying them over a period of time. The third thing I can do is an offer and compromise. And that's when I, they agree to a lump sum payment. The fourth thing I can do is I can get declared currently not collectible, and that means I can prove to the IRS that I don't have any money at the end of the month. Once I pay all my bills, I don't have anything left. And if I can prove that to the IRS, they'll leave me alone. The fifth thing I can do is I can file for protection under the bankruptcy laws, which one? That's a whole different show. Uh, the, the sixth thing I can do, and this is what people do before they come to see me, usually, they do nothing. Wow. And let the IRS come after you. And again, you think that they forgot about you, but they the didn't. sixth thing that you could do doesn't really sound like an option. <laughs> well, it's always an option. You always have an option to do nothing, you know, and let the let them do whatever let they're going to do. Just roll, roll right, right over roll you. right over you. Take whatever they're going to take. And a lot of people do that. When, you know, a lot of people. What happens? They come to see me and they they say, "Well, you know, the IRS has been taken out of my bank account. I mean, out of my." Uh, 
garnishing my wages now for a couple of years, and I just thought, well, okay, I'll pay them that way. And then all of a sudden, they go to their bank account, and they took their bank account. Well, they're already taken out of my out of my uh, wages. Why would they go after my bank account? Because you still haven't addressed it. You still have, you know, they're doing that. Uh, it's not voluntary. You haven't could you haven't been in compliance, so you have to get in compliance, and that's a big thing. That's now, huge. One of the things can I you get. In a, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but can you get into compliance on your own? Well, I don't know what that. First off, you got to know what that means, compliance, right? In that, and and usually that means just filing your tax returns, and then and and paying your taxes as they come due. Now, uh, this is a big thing because I get a, I get a call this week. I did a offer and compromise a couple of years ago, and then it turns out I owe money. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, if you don't follow, people don't understand it. When you get into an agreement with the IRS, whether it's an installment agreement or whatever it is, part of the agreement is you're going to stay in compliance. You're going to pay your bills going forward. You're going to pay the taxes on time. So and we talk a lot about that mm-hmm. cascading tax, tax problems. Now, what, almost always, not all, I shouldn't say that, many times the answer to a, to a, uh, uh, IRS problem is what they call a, an installment agreement. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple different types of installment agreement. But the one I want to talk about today is the one that most people get into. And this is what they call a partial installment agreement. And what that means is I'm only going to pay the IRS what I can pay. Sometimes I can't pay them. And that's what puts people, makes them put their head in the stand. I owe the IRS $100,000. There's no way I can pay $100,000. So rather than you know, rather than trying to address it, I stick my head in the sand and hope that they go away. And, and you know, as I mentioned, the IRS doesn't go away. It just takes them some time and they'll start coming after you and ask you to pay the hundred thousand dollars. And if you don't address it yourself, they'll they'll keep coming after you till they get a hundred thousand dollars. But what if I don't have any money? To, I don't have enough money to pay them a hundred thousand dollars. Well, as long as I can prove that. So I say, oh, and again, I owe him $100,000, and I can prove I can only pay him $150 a month. The IRS will take the $150 a month and leave you alone, get, take you out of collections. So that's the thing that I think most people don't realize, is that if you can't pay him, you can't pay him. But you can prove to them what you can pay, and then they'll take that. And it seems like a win. It seems like a win in my book. Absolutely. Right that and again, that's what people don't really realize because they, they always figure, oh, well, I can't pay them, so I'm just going to ignore it. Well, we've talked about this in other shows too. What's the best compromise you've ever had? Oh, <laughs> I just I just printed this up too because I think the best one we just not too long ago uh, was over fifty thousand dollars my clients owed, and they the IRS settled for twenty five bucks. So that was a good. want that but cash, I, or, <laughs> cash or credit. It was. Yeah, they had to make it one pay. You had to pay. We paid twenty percent up front, <laughs> so five bucks, and then uh, and then they we got to pay the twenty bucks, and then it was yeah, then it was good. Then we got rid of the lien on them for them. I got good. change. You guys take that. <laughs> they didn't take it, but that's this one, not but again. Now, partial installment agreement is often time is often. I think it's the most common remedy. But that's where it all comes in. You have to gather all this information. You have to about the client and find out what their finances are, how much money they make, how you can prove that. You got to look at bank statements and pay stubs and all this other stuff. And you got to provide all that to the IRS. And then you have to prove what your expenses are. So you got the more you could prove. So look, it sounds like there's a pretty lengthy process. Involved. It is a lengthy process. So basically, so when it, people try to do this to yourself, and that was a question yes. you asked. What happens when you try to do this yourself is that the 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 amount of money that the IRS says you could pay a month is more than you really can pay a month because they're not going to they're not going to debate with you about what is an acceptable expense because that's what happens they they don't allow your expenses and then all of a sudden they say yeah, I could pay a lot more than I can and and then I'm going to default because the, the it's just too high so that's where people make a mistake well you know what and that just makes sense to bring in a third party such as yourself absolutely local third party absolutely. affiliate right here that is going to make sure that you're going to fight the IRS that you're going right. to make sure that they get that offer and compromise partial or full compromise it seems like a win-win you're to kind me. of mixing terms there but that's okay because <laughs> you don't get a partial offer and compromise but that's okay didn't you just say that earlier no it was an it's a it's a it's a inform, it's an installment agreement no. partial installment no. agreement Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen. That's why you're not an IRS that's guy. That's why I'm not doing this. That's why I'm here to just be the co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, think local, stay local. 
Open tax resolutions at 312-664-6649 or visit ChicagoTaxTeam.com. Stay tuned because after the commercial break, more IRS Radio Hours coming at you here on AM560. The Answer. answer. 